Hi, Chemily, you did a great job describing your programs. Um, I'd like to thank the treasurer and thank um, Todd at the Shasta EDC for having us today. Um, I'm here to talk about the California Capital Access Program. Um, we, uh, it's offered by the California Pollution Control Financing Authority. We're an independent authority within the state treasurer's office. And the uh, um, California Capital Access Program is different from um, the programs that Emily mentioned in that um, Emily has a loan guarantee program. Our program is a, um, what's called a loan loss reserve program. And the more um, we provide contributions to lenders, and the more, the larger the lender's loan loss reserve um, becomes, the better able they're gonna be to be able to um, make good on claims or defaults that, um, that happen among their, their um, borrowers. Um, that is my little introduction. Um, next slide, please. Um, the CalCap program was established in 1994 and um, it started as CalCap for Small Business. Uh, it's, that's our more general program. It's perfect for working capital start to cover startup costs and other typical credit needs, construction, renovation of buildings, um, different working capital um, equipment and things like that are often um, covered in the CalCap loans. Um, that's our more general program. Then we have a collateral support program. The collateral support program provides a different kind of credit enhancement. And these, this program works really well for borrowers who have strong credit, but maybe lack the sufficient collateral they need to be able to qualify for a loan. And then um, the third program I'm gonna to mention today is our CalCap um, Air Resources Board Truck Loan Assistance Program. And this program um, with funding from the California Air Resources Board, we're able to um, help owners of small fleets to finance the equipment they need to get clean trucks on the road to comply with the state's um, engine emission standards. Um, I've mentioned, I've listed a couple other programs here, more out of, um, for just basic information and background that we do have uh, programs um, that help with the installation of electric vehicle charging station, one to help small businesses um, become ADA compliant, and another one to help property owners um, finance what they need to become seismically, their buildings to become seismically safe. Next slide, please. Um, as Emily mentioned, um, we, much like her program, we do have a lot of, we have quite a, a range of businesses that are able to participate in the CalCap program. Um, we can cover startups and nonprofits um, and businesses with fewer than 500 employees. There are a few things we can't finance. Um, sometimes it depends on the source of funds for to, to look at refinancing. Um, commercial real estate just depends if the property is owned by the prop. The, by the business owner. And um, passive real estate, much like Emily's, is um, not something we can do. Or gambling, um, shooting range as adult entertainment, um, tobacco products, and alcohol sales. However, we can um, enroll loans for wineries and breweries, which I know are very popular right now and in need of assistance. Next slide, please. Um, I wanted to put a slide in here to talk a little bit about who turned to um, CalCap for Small Business last year. And um, you can see the large orange piece of the pie is um, our transportation and warehousing um, business uses. The next, it looks like there's a close tie between retail and accommodation and food services. Um, retail, the, um, I think the reason that our trucking, um, the transportation and warehousing is on the larger side is again, we have this, uh, the CalCap um, California Air Resources Board. And if a, pro if a loan isn't qualified, does not meet the, the specific uh, requirements of the California Air Resources Board, it can um, likely be enrolled in our CalCap for Small Business Program. So I wanted to show how just if, if um, a borrower doesn't meet the specifics of, of some of our more specialized programs. They generally are able to meet the requirements for the, the small business program. I took a quick look at our numbers for Shasta. And in 2019 and 2020 combined, it looks like we did five loans in our California, in our CalCap for Small Business program, loans totaling 153,000. And on our California Air Resources Board, we did 17 loans for 1.5 million. Next slide, please. 
Um, a little bit more on the details of our CalCap for Small Business program. Um, as I mentioned, this tends to be the more general um, and more general purposes um, enroll loans borrowers with more general purposes enroll in this program. We see land acquisition, startup costs, working capital, construction. Another interesting uh, thing that I like to point out is we we do see. Um, businesses that are um, waiting for, for bridge loans from SBA or FEMA, um, and they just need some money up front to be able to, um, to, to buy the equipment or make the improvements that they need to make. We also do a lot of loans in the CalCap for Small Business program for food trucks. Um, the, maximum the maximum loan amount for this program is $5 million, and the maximum enrolled amount is $2.5 million. We do have extra loan loss support for business for loans to businesses in severely affected communities, and that could be um, communities with high levels of unemployment. Um, we've recently um, expanded this to include businesses directly impacted by COVID-19 and businesses who have been directly impacted by our recent um, fires, disasters, and um, power shutoffs. We um, do not set the underwriting criteria for um, the loans in this program. Instead, the lenders set, set those, um, those terms and conditions depending on the credit um, worthiness of the borrower. And um, so we just ask that they use their standard prudent underwriting procedures to do so. And um, the loans based on the needs of, of the borrower could be short-term or long-term, have a fixed or variable rate, or bear just about any type of, type of amortization schedule. I provided links to our overall program page as well as our lender list. Um, as I mentioned, um, the businesses work directly with our lenders and here's a link to our lender, li our lender list and this is for the CalCap for Small Business Program. And again, this does, um, this list changes on a regular basis as we add new and uh, new lenders to the list. So I encourage you to um, follow it if you get a chance. Next slide, please. Um, here's a little more detail on our collateral support program. As I mentioned, um, different than our, our CalCap for Small Business is the collateral support program actually pledges cash to support the collateral shortfall for businesses that might not otherwise get be able to get financing if they didn't have, um, if, because they're, they lack the collateral. So we do provide that cash support. Um, again, we often see, um, this is another familiar um, use for the collateral support loans or for bridge loans um, for borrowers who are waiting for permanent financing to kick in um, for startup costs, construction, working capital, inventory or equipment purchases. Um, these tend to be larger loans. Um, the minimum loan amount is $50,000 and the maximum is $50,000 to $20 million for the under collateralized loans. Um, we also provide an additional um, supplemental contribution for loans enrolled for green businesses or manufacturing loans. Um, the smaller loans between $50,000 and $250,000 and to those loans enrolled to businesses in severely affected communities. And as I mentioned, that's businesses in areas of high, high unemployment, um, impacted by COVID or impacted by um, the, the, the designated disasters. Um, the maximum collateral per loan per borrower is $2.5 million. And again, I provided a link to our program page and a lender list. Um, there, are, there are different lenders that participate in the collateral support program than in the CalCap for Small Business program. There is some overlap, but um, I would encourage if, if you're looking into, into the collateral support program to, to um, definitely take a look at the lender list for that program. Next slide. Um, I did include the links to the lenders, um, lender lists on each of the programs that I, the, the two programs I mentioned, I wanted to provide just as if you wanted to look across the lenders in all of our programs, um, this is our webpage. Um, and as you can see, the links here are for each of the programs that I mentioned earlier. And I'd like to um, just add that we are accepting new lenders. If there's lenders that businesses feel comfortable with working with on a, on a regular basis and already have an established relationship, we do encourage them to have their lenders give us a call. 
we are happy to provide training and um, education to those lenders. Next slide. And I, I included a link here on how, how lenders can apply. It's a simple one page application. Um, most lending institutions can qualify to participate in CalCap. I've listed the federal and state chartered banks, credit unions, savings associations, CDFIs, um, and there's other types of institu institutions that could qualify dep depending on the source of CalCap funds. For our small our, our um, truck program, we tend to have finance lenders that enroll in that program as well, and that works. But here is the link to our lender application. And um, next slide, please. And um, Here's my contact information, a link to our CalCap webpage, our CalCap inbox, and our, and our phone number, um, as, long as, I, as well as I encourage you to follow our, our, our Twitter um, handle. We provide a lot of um, resources for small businesses through our Twitter handle. Um, we have staff in the office um, here to answer questions. Um, should a borrower have a question or a lender have a, a question? And we're very responsive to any and all of those, those um, questions that come in. So please don't hesitate to reach out to us um, and we will do what we can to be of assistance. And um, 